Hey there! Welcome back to Reddit Dating, best channel for cheating stories. Make sure to like and subscribe the channel for more spicy stories. My girlfriend went to an after party with some random people from the club and came back without makeup. So I've been together with my girlfriend for nine months now. So far everything seemed alright with little to no trust issues. Last weekend though, she went out with her single friends to a club. There they met a group of people, mostly guys and a few girls. They decided to have an after party at one of the guys' place which continued until 8 a.m. I was awake when she arrived home. She openly told about everything and how she had a great time so I felt she had nothing to hide. Then it hit me. When she came home, she didn't have any makeup on and had her hair tied in a bun. Usually she washes her makeup off before and this has been bugging me a lot. Am I overthinking or is this a telltale sign of infidelity? Update. The original post can be found from my post history. I'm using the mobile app and am too lazy to find a way to link it here. At first I would like to add a couple of things to my previous post. She did not ghost me during the night and did message me that she would be going to this after party, which is a good sign in a way. She sent video snaps during the night, which showed her friends, and that she didn't go there alone and left with them. So now into the update. As many of you assured me, her makeup was in fact smeared from dancing all night, and she had wiped it away. When I asked this, the answer came directly and her body language, which I was told to look out for by you guys, remained normal, so I feel like I have a good reason not to suspect her about anything happening between her and anyone at the after party. She also quite openly explained about the night in detail, which made me feel even more assured. Even after the conversations we had, her everyday behavior hasn't changed in any way, she doesn't act any clingier or less distant, which cheaters usually do. Except for one thing, she's been on her phone slightly more, and I quickly noticed the reason for it. I noticed that there was a new guy on her Snapchat's BF list. She hasn't made any attempts to hide her phone though, always leaves it face up so I felt she probably didn't have anything to hide in there. When I asked about this dude though, she at first explained that it was a guy from the after party and said that she told him that she is in a relationship but the guy wanted to add her anyways. She openly told about the guy, how he is from the same town as us, but lives somewhere else, and was visiting his friends for the weekend. I asked if she felt this was acceptable behavior in a relationship, and she was like why not? She doesn't have almost any guy friends and said she doesn't see him as anything more than a friend and how the guy was kind of a loner and just wanted to get to know new people. I wanted to believe her but got a bit suspicious from the way she reacted. She started to accuse me of how she never asks about my female friends, to all of which I've made it clear I am in a relationship and got a bit about me asking about this. She quickly apologized though for her behavior and went back to normal. She has been quite open about the things they talk about, has acted quite assuringly in every other way and doesn't react as angrily if I bring it up, but still talks with the dude from time to time. So what do I make of this all? Not to be mean or sound arrogant, but I did some snooping on this dude and have got a picture that he couldn't be a threat in any way. Still, I don't know how he is like in real life. Also, What's the reason she could be so interested in talking to this dude when he lives far away and only visits our town a few times a year? Even though she doesn't show any sings of infidelity, body language is open about talking to the guy, she acts around me the same as before, why did she react so strongly when I asked if this was okay? Why didn't she tell me about this dude until I noticed she was talking to her even though she made no attempts in hiding it? I mean I obviously know the guy's intentions, but I also wonder if she has been honest about dating me if the guy still wanted to get to know her. Everything about her behavior points to honesty, except for getting angry at me asking if this is okay, but I still am not sure. Of course I would love for her to have more friends from both since she doesn't have many, but is this an appropriate way of getting them? Thank you for any advice and answers, as you can see, I am still in need of them. Story 2 Caught my wife, 29F, cheating on me, 29M, again after a year. Why do I question my own sanity? Hello and welcome to everyone. Because I do not have another channel available to me at this time that allows me to express myself in this manner, I am extremely grateful to each and every one of you who takes the time to read and share their honest opinions from an outside perspective. 
This is my first post here, and I simply wanted to express myself, gather some opinions, and vent. Background, my name is, 29M, my wife is, 29F, and we have two gorgeous daughters under the age of four. Please keep in mind that my wife is suffering from depression. At one time, he was admitted to the hospital and diagnosed with suicide ideation. She takes medicine or, at the very least, she should be taking medication according to prescription. Story, I discovered my wife was having an affair back in December of this year. I didn't find out until a month later, in January 2022, when my two-year-old daughter handed me my wife's mobile phone, which had been left in the living room since it was out in the open. The lights came on as a result of a text message that had arrived. When I picked up the phone, I found a text message that stated I love you. I immediately responded. My heart skipped a beat when I recognized the name, it belonged to a close friend of hers. Not only from that one communication, but from all of the previous messages that had been sent. Angry, shocked, disappointed, and overwhelmed with a sense of foreboding, I looked about. I couldn't believe I was in the midst of what I considered to be a terrifying nightmare. When I questioned my wife about her phone, I asked her what she wanted to do with it what exactly is it? What exactly is going on? I'm not exaggerating when I say that the first thing that comes out of her lips is why are you even looking at my phone? I became even more enraged as a result of what happened. I couldn't believe what she said when she opened her lips. She didn't express any remorse until much later in our talk. However, now that I think about it, I believe that is correct. Her apologies were not real, as shown by the fact that I had to coax them out of her. Even in that case, that is not the manner in which I would behave if I were in her situation. In any case, she gives me her side of the story and confirms that she had encounters with this man on a number of different times. I wasn't providing her what she needed nor was I genuinely listening to her for a time, she said, emphasizing that she was dejected and unhappy at home, and that I wasn't giving her what she needed nor was I truly listening to her. In general, she attempted to portray herself as the victim and placed the responsibility on me for her behavior. Because I didn't know how to respond knowing what I know now, I ended up taking the fall for it and seeming like a fool. I actually held myself responsible for her infidelity. When I think about it now, the words devastation and heartbreak don't even come close to describing how I felt at the time and how I feel today simply thinking about it. This sort of conduct is not something I would desire on anybody. After a month, I decided that I wanted to continue our relationship and attempt to reconcile with her, but the only way for it to work was for her to end the affair and ban this person from all kinds of social media outlets, messaging apps, and other similar platforms. Remove this home wrecker from our lives on a literal basis. Her actions were seen by me, who was there when she made the phone call and blocked him from all social media platforms. A year has passed, and although we've had some bumps on the road, I've had the impression that things were improving. We continued to attend a couple's therapist once a week for around six to seven months, which was a good investment. We came to the conclusion that the sessions were no longer necessary and proceeded to put into practice what we had learned throughout the meetings. It's now February 2022, and it's a Saturday morning in the United Kingdom. I get out of bed at 5.30 a.m to feed our cat. When I returned to our bedroom, I saw her phone was on the table next to her. I just wanted to put the phone down and go back to sleep, but I realized it was the AP's username on the screen. I couldn't believe my eyes when I saw what I saw. I waited for a while, certain that this was nothing more than a nightmare. I didn't read any of the notes since the ones I had read were more than enough for me. Everything that I had believed had ended a year ago came rushing back to me like a flash in front of my eyes. This time, I remained cool and collected, and I did not shout or yell in frustration like I had done the previous time. I roused her from her sleep and said what is this person's name? What exactly is going on? She didn't say anything for around 5 to 10 minutes. There was full and utter quiet. She then goes on to say that this is the second time she wasn't happy she was miserable, and she couldn't seem to shake the feeling she had for this person. However, he just reached out to make sure I was still alive and was in good health. At that point, I simply couldn't put my faith in anything she said anymore. When I gave her another opportunity, she spit straight back in my face the little faith I still had in her. 
From there, she didn't immediately apologize for her actions. She attempted to portray herself as the victim, justifying her actions and claiming that it was my fault for believing that we didn't need to continue couples counseling after the first six to seven months. I went for a 30-minute stroll outdoors before returning and said I'm looking for a divorce. Even though I still care for you, I can't keep torturing myself in this way. Since then, I've continued to have doubts about my own abilities. My self-esteem has never been so badly destroyed in my whole life as it is right now. I feel marriage is sacrosanct because I was brought up in a family that had that belief. As a result, we are now in the process of hiring an attorney in order to prepare for the divorce process. I'm still trying to make sense of things, and I've been talking to my pals for help as well. Once we are divorced, I want to inform her family the reason for our separation rather than her attempting to conceal the facts, however, what do you think? Is it a good idea? I feel obligated to do so in order to guarantee that people do not believe any falsehoods that may come out of her lips in order to forward her own goal. First and foremost, why do cheaters choose to play the victim whenever they are caught? 2. Why do cheaters hold the betrayed spouse responsible? 3. Why do I begin to doubt my own sanity when I am not the one who cheated in the first place? I want to express my gratitude once again to everyone who took the time to read and comment on this post. I hope that everyone who has moved on is in a better mental condition and is with someone who really loves and respects them, no matter what happens in the rest of their lives.